All right, how's it going, y'all? Today I'm really excited because I received the Tiny Voyager in the mail today, which is a Raspberry Pi based KVM over IP. Basically what this allows you to do is plug it up to your server and you'll be able to remotely from any web browser on your local network over an HTML5 interface and be able to see your screen. Then it also passes in all the keyboard and mouse commands you're doing. So basically you can remote desktop into any servers that don't support that. And this is really great for bare metal servers, especially over installation processes where you can't remote connect to a server before it's powered on. And so setting this up can be a really great thing. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm gonna do a little unboxing. So Michael, the creator of all of this, it was actually kind enough to send me the Tiny Pilot Voyager, which is their nicest model. And so off the bat, it came with some pretty basic instructions. Basically tells you, hey, this is how you can get to it, which is awesome. And it also comes with a little Tiny Pilot sticker which I think is pretty cool. So first off, I got the uh, nice power supply. I have looked, it is a very powerful one, which should be good because I have noticed with Raspberry Pi 4s especially, you can end up getting throttled if you don't have enough power. Then it's got a few nicely braided uh, USB cables. I think these are all micro to type B, which is basically just like that normal flathead input. Yeah, we've got three micro USB cables. USB-C one, that's probably our power supply. The, the power data adapter, I'm gonna have to definitely look at this. Okay, so this is actually the piece that makes everything happen. Basically right here, this takes in the power input and this is the data output, which is what you hook up to your server. And right here is actually what you hook up to your USB-C adapter on your Raspberry Pi. And so it gives it both power and data through the exact same cable which actually I did not even know was possible with the Raspberry Pi, which is definitely something I'm gonna to wanna to experiment with later on. Then we also have the basically HDMI to VGA adapter that Michael was kind enough to send me. This is offered alongside for $14, but it allows you to use VGA cables instead of HDMI cables for input, which for me, I've got a Dell PowerEdge that I'd love to be able to hook this up to. And so it only has VGA output, which is what most industry servers has. And so having one of these is really great. And it's included for $14, which I think is a pretty good price. I actually looked them up. I actually thought about doing this a while ago and I just could not price it out to make sense. I could not find many working things for this cheap. And so I was really worried about the compatibility and stuff. And so it's really nice having it sent by Michael because you know that it will work with your setup. And finally, the meat of the thing, the Tiny Pilot Voyager. Basically, this is the two gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 4 in a 3D printed case that is a really nice case. It is really strong and sturdy. I'm very impressed by it with a HDMI input right here. So basically all you have to do is hook this up and it's supposed to be incredibly easy. I'm really excited to test this out and I'm really impressed by this case. And so overall, my goal for this very first step is to see, hey, how long does it take to set up? So I've got on my phone, I'm gonna go ahead and start a timer and basically see how long it takes to get video output out of my server. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click start and go ahead and set this up. All right, and so it's been five minutes and 40 seconds and I am now in. Let's go ahead and show details to make sure this actually worked. All right, and so just like that, it was actually honestly just that quick and easy. I actually just skimmed the instructions and saw this. We are now on my Dell PowerEdge, basically looking at my FreeNAS build. So I can go ahead and type things here and it'll work. So yeah, honestly, it was really just that easy. I'm actually quite impressed by this. It's got a keyboard down here if you need it, which is nice to have. And it shows you what, you, what commands were recently sent. Let's go ahead and check out the settings. We can also throw in a username and password in there. And this is actually the difference between having that pro, which you see right here, is the fact that this comes with a password authentication. And so Michael has basically put all the instructions out there and even the source code out there on GitHub for free for anybody who'd like to use it. However, if you'd like things like password authentication, and I think a couple other things, I gotta I got look at the differences, you do need to pay that pro license. And the Tiny Pilot Voyager comes with that. So I'll go ahead and just give a username and password. So I'll go ahead and log out and make sure this works. 
yeah, and it seems to work. And so yeah, overall you can see it working. I, could, I can configure a bunch of settings. I can change our network interfaces here. I can say, oh, I actually want this to be lag zero. I want to delete that. So this is really good for basically bare metal. Hey, I've got to get stuff done on here. And that's how easy this was to set up. I'm actually really impressed by how quick and easy that worked. I just kind of read the instructions beforehand, but other than that, I had not messed with it at all. And it took like three and a half minutes, I don't quite remember, but honestly, it was really quick and easy to set up. I just plugged everything in and it just kind of worked. But that's not to say this tool is not without issues. So first off, it is not able to do remote connections right now. I've talked to Michael about this. He says it's because of the current compression. It just requires way too much bandwidth. So you would not be able to effectively do it remotely. He says people have been able to do it with like five FPS, which honestly to me is not that big of a deal considering how I've had to debug systems in my uh, consulting side of this by literally remoting into a machine then that is then remoted into another machine and you're like moving your mouse and it's like going. But honestly, what I would absolutely love for this tool to be able to do is to be able to be sent to a client's house that automatically connects back to my VPN server over WireGuard. And so as soon as they hook it up, I'm able to bare metal just get into their server and set up anything I'd like to do. I think this would be an awesome tool for that because it is cheap enough where, well, if it got destroyed on transit, it's not the end of the world and it's portable enough. Plus it also has that really nice case. I could have gone through and taken Michael's source code and written up my own part of it and used that. But honestly, the package altogether that just works is what's kind of the most important thing to me. I'd love to be able to ship one of these to a client, have them hook it up, and then basically be able to directly connect to their bare metal computer and set it up. I've had a few clients where this would have saved me actually hours because I'm literally on FaceTime with them in a server room and having to figure out what is on their screen at like two frames per second. This would have been super helpful there. Even if I got five frames per second out of there, I actually could have seen the screen and figured out what to do and just done it for them, especially over a web interface. But Michael is currently working on that. He says it's currently on motion JPEG compression, which is really easy to compress, but is not very compressed. And he's going to work on getting it to H.264, which is great for streaming. The other thing I'd really like to get set up, and Michael's also talked about this, is the ability to mount remote disk images. Basically that means instead of plugging in a USB stick with a operating system on there and using that to build it, basically just take the exact same USB connection that's already used and say, oh hey, by the way, there is this remote disk on here that's basically created by the Raspberry Pi. And so that way I'd not only be able to remote in and do everything, I'd also be able to create installation media from my home computer, wherever they are, and use that to install their operating system. That would be really great. And Michael is working on that. All right, so there was one other con that I had. I have experienced a couple of UI glitches, basically two of them. Once I was unable to get to a drop down menu because it was on cascading rows and basically the, it was offset down one further than it should have been. And I'll show you this on the screen. So basically I was unable to get from one setting to the other because anytime I left it trying to get to the other one, it would disappear. And so that was one UI glitch. And another one was I randomly lost video signal from the screen. At first I thought the VGA had been pulled out, but when I took a screenshot, it showed the proper screenshot. And so after a reboot, it did work, but I think it might've also been partially my web browser caching something that it shouldn't have because I actually had to close the page after rebooting it and then opening the page again. And then after that, it just worked fine. That is one glitch. And that is another thing to say, this is still in work. Michael is constantly updating this. He's constantly building up on it and it is not perfect quite yet, but for what it is, I think it's really great. All right. So now let's talk about pricing and who this is for. So the tiny pilot Voyager, which is that pro model that I got is $300. And that is honestly not cheap, but when you compare it to other KVM over IP devices, it is so much cheaper because realistically the only people who need this are enterprise users and home lavers who don't have the budget for any of it. So it's really just enterprise grade stuff that is sold at enterprise grade prices. And so it is actually pretty cheap for what it is, though you definitely could build your own for cheaper. And they even have a hobbyist kit that doesn't use the camera input, instead uses a USB input, which has a little bit higher latency and is not as stable, but that's $170. 
And for including all the equipment in there and the case and everything, that's honestly a pretty decent deal. The other thing that Michael has done is he has put the source code on GitHub that anybody can pull and develop from. And that is something that's awesome. Honestly, I would not be able to do my job basically making all these fun tutorials about all these great projects people have done without people like Michael basically going through and saying, hey, you know what? This is a need. I'm going to develop this. And so it is a huge thing to be able to say, hey, I'm going to put this all online for free. And I think for everything he's asking, it's a pretty decent price if you need it. If you don't need that password authentication or that HTTPS, meaning you're probably a home user, honestly, you don't need the pro version. But if you are looking to throw this in a enterprise grade or somebody like me who would love to be able to set this up at different client sites for a really cheap way to get a physical connection to their machines, then this is a really great setup. There are a few updates that are needed to really make this work for exactly what I'd like to do. But if you're somebody who would just like to be able to connect to your server and debug it remotely, which is a really nice thing to have, and it's what I'm definitely going to be able to do. It's a really great thing, and I'm really impressed by how it works. On my Dell PowerEdge, I've actually got what's called iDRAC Pro License. It just came with it, I got it from eBay. iDRAC is basically Dell's remote management software that comes with all their PowerEdge servers, and there are two different versions. Well, I think there's another even higher version, but basically there is Express and Enterprise. Express gets you like some basic, hey, this is what's going on with your server, but Enterprise gets you the real stuff. It gets you remote mounting of media, it gets you remote keyboard and mouse, and it gets you that remote screen. So in a lot of ways, at least to what it brings to my table, it brings everything to the table that Tiny Pilot does. At least assuming Michael is actually able to hook up Tiny Pilot to become remote mountable media. And I'll be honest with you, I have found the Tiny Pilot KVM to actually work a lot better than Dell's iDRAC system. That is a enterprise pro tool that is built into the motherboard. So many times, iDRAC has just been so finicky for me where I have to constantly close it, open it, cl open it, close it, open it, close it, and then it says, oh, there's too many connections. So many times it just drops out and stops working for me. I've actually found this tiny pilot Voyager to work a lot better at it. And so given between the two, if I was able to get that remote media on my tiny pilot Voyager, I would definitely have absolutely no reason to use iDRAC. The other nice thing is I can take this and plug it into different servers. So I'm not an enterprise user. I don't constantly need to be able to remote into every single one of my machines. Realistically, I'm very rarely going to be remoting into them, needing that actual on-screen ability. And so honestly, the way I plan to keep using this tool is basically just keeping it in my server rack. And whenever I need to remote debug a computer, I'll basically just plug it into that exact server. Honestly, I'm rarely having to do this, and so it does not bother me that much though a really clean solution that probably would honestly not be that much more expensive, especially because you can use GPIO to program different things, would be to hook this up to an actual KVM switch. So basically this is a switch that basically takes in a bunch of different monitor inputs and a bunch of different USB outputs and basically allows you to toggle through them, which is great for server racks. And so it basically takes all of them and sends them to one screen. And so you can say, okay, I need to debug this server and click it. What would be absolutely awesome would be if Michael was able to pair this with one of those and electronically from the menu, just say, okay, send me to computer number three. And basically the tiny pilot would communicate with the KVM switch and would say, okay, go to number three. And that way you wouldn't need a bunch of tiny pilots. Instead, you would just need one controlling everything and the KVM switch would toggle between all of them, which is a lot more affordable. All right, so in conclusion, honestly, I think there are two really great use cases for this, and one of them is not quite possible yet, but I'm hoping Michael, once he's able to get H.264 video encoding instead of that motion JPEG, will be able to do. And the first one is that, hey, be able to send this to a client and have them plug it into their network cable and have automatically create a WireGuard connection back to a host WireGuard server and be able to remote debug any server over an IP connection, that would be absolutely awesome to be able to do. It would save me so much time, especially for bare metal servers when I'm trying to set them up. And honestly, shipping is cheap. And this box is built so well. It's a really nice case. It's not like I'm sending them a bunch of flimsy things that they have to use. No, it'd be a very nice, compact thing. I could just send them Michael's instructions and basically have them plug in three or four cables and all of a sudden, now it works. 
That is my honest dream case. And for the price point, it is perfect. I still think it would be an awesome service that Michael could provide of, hey, you can rent these for X amount. I'll ship them to clients for you and handle all of that and basically preload your WireGuard connections to them. Then again, I'm not sure how many people are like me and need these randomly, but that would be an awesome feature to have. And the second use case is the one I'm actually gonna keep it and use it all the time for, and that's the ability to constantly be able to debug any remote server really easily. This works for Raspberry Pis, it works for anything that has a HDMI or a VGA output, if you get the VGA adapter. And so because of that, I have found so many circumstances where it's like, if I could just get keyboard and mouse on this machine, it would take me so much faster than trying to set this up remotely. And so that's what I'd really like to be able to do. All right, so now in conclusion, is this for you? I mean, honestly, that's the only question you can really answer. I'd say most people who watch this YouTube channel, probably not. Most people probably have Synologies or Raspberry Pis that they always just have a screen hooked up to or can just SSH in. But for people who really want to be able to hook these things up really easily, 300 bucks is not that bad compared to what you would be paying otherwise. I was really impressed by it. It is not perfect, but for the price point and all the features it currently has, I would say it's really nice. And it's honestly going to be something I use constantly on this channel because honestly, I never have a monitor around that I can use. I don't even think I have a USB keyboard. A few times I've had to, and it took me a long time to find one that was working. And so honestly, the ability to set all of this stuff up from my desktop is going to be a really nice addition, and I'm definitely going to keep using it. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this one. As further updates come out for this, I'm definitely going to be updating y'all. And I'll go ahead and leave a link to both the Tiny Pilot website and the source code on GitHub in the description below. And that's gonna be it. All right, have a good one. Bye.